Inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, Mint Mobile is giving you a much-needed break on your wireless bill. Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Order today at mintmobile.com slash gam. This was fair. The boss is like, hey, man, please don't send me emails that say I need money to incorporate Sex Hotel LLC in fucking Columbia. <laughs> HR is being a real pain in the ass about it here at Homeland Security. You want to tone it down? Hey, man, did you expense hot tub full of babies? <laughs> First of all, you put it under automotive, and I know the app doesn't have that many options, but... God-awful movie. 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 And a big thanks to Nikki for some local Nevada whiskey. Very excited. Can you all not hear me? I'm going to turn my mic on. I'm an idiot. Like I said, we need Morgan. We really need Morgan here. Morgan, cut the part where I wasn't on the good news is he has no choice. And, of course, also joining us tonight, put your hands together for my band. Talk about, oh, God damn. <laughs> you can't even do it with those gloves, can you? There, now, now it's on. Yeah. <laughs> Who's ready to talk about sex trafficking? <laughs> Come I feel on like in, I want to give Hansen. some context to the guy doing our sound here. Um, <laughs> you all heard him woo for sex traffickers. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Ballard is waiting in the back to get you up. <laughs> God Awful Movies has been a secret operation this whole time. Yes. <laughs> I have to change or my neck will snap like a baby bird. <laughs> okay, good. Good, you're, dis- you're way too distracting. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, it's ridiculous that this city exists, right? <laughs> The whole time, look, I've been spending the entire week just going like, I'm sure there was better uses of this water. What the, the hell were we thinking? It's a cool enough city that Eli walked into wherever he rented that, and they were like, oh, I know what you want, exactly. We well, got you. What's really, truly amazing is how nonplussed everyone who came in and saw, like, you normally before the show, there, there he is. is. Normally, before the show, when, like, the tech people walk in, we have to, like, explain, okay, all right, so, no, it's a bit, it's a bit. In, in Vegas, they're just like, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. they're like, are you going to kill and eat him before or after the show? Because <laughs> we, we gave you these painter tarps you have to lay out if you're going to do it now. <laughs> you can't stain the carpet or say the name of the hotel. <laughs> that fat guy you're going to fuck to death. <laughs> So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? Okay, you can't segue to this. We watched <laughs> Sound of Freedom. Yeah. That is the correct Who reaction. Is correct. Yeah, it's the story of Tim Ballard, boo again. Yeah. Yeah, who wanted to save kids. That's good, I guess. So he turned. Don't make him yay. I'm for trying. Sex. I just want to. Yay. And then a, you're the little bunny, hop, hop, it's hop. Not, <laughs> <laughs> not, he wanted to save kids, so he turned into an armed vigilante. Yes. It's, it's John QAnon, basically. <laughs> it's also the story of Eli Bosnick's parenting style, which is fun. Mm-hmm. 
And it's the story of Tim Ballard is a liar. Yes, it we'll is. Outline all of that. We will as talk best we can. a lot about that. Yeah. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the barely coherent child sex trafficking myth that convinced your uncle to storm the Capitol on January 6th. <laughs> but you wish it had more posthumous karate lessons. <laughs> You will love this movie. It's a uh, Bambo First Blood. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and and of course, an important word of warning here. This is of course a movie about child sex trafficking. What? Um, it, it's yeah. If you can imagine that, it's a god awful movie about child sex trafficking. But that is what it's about. So that leaves us with two options. We could either do a very serious, very dour episode about this terrible tragedy. That would be appropriate. Or we could make jokes about child trafficking. Um, so just so everyone knows, I know a lot of people bring their significant others who aren't familiar with our show, shit like that. Whoops. A lot of, um, a lot of that's you on are... them, not us, right? That's not our fault. We didn't do that to you. But the point is, is that we're not going to bring you the tasteful, inoffensive observations that you're used to on god-awful movies. <laughs> this one might get a little offensive. Okay, but... Hear me out. <laughs> it's worth pointing out that we're not making fun of any actual child yes. trafficking. Yeah. We're making fun of the fictional child trafficking that Tim Ballard wrote about himself, as Noah will explain throughout the episode. He entirely fucking made all of it up. So, like, no children were harmed in the making of this comedy show unless you count Tim Ballard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there's anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I'm going to go with best worst. Tim Ballard is a liar. Fuck okay, yeah. sure, yeah. sure. And okay, here's my, my favorite Tim Ballard thing that I learned recently. He thinks he's a magical, prophetic Mormon wizard Mormon or something. Wizard, yep. yep. And apparently he would hire a scribe to like walk around with him and take his random dictation that he was getting from the ghost of Nephi the Mormon prophet ghost. So he'd be walking around Columbia and being like, scribe, scribe, I write this down. I'm the Godhead, Nephi told me. I'm the Godhead, write that down also. He's sure he's going to be a U.S. senator, mm -hmm. U.S. president. And then? And then the official prophet of the Mormon church. Yep, yep. And yeah. meanwhile, the scribe's going, you didn't even look into your fucking hat. This is bullshit. <laughs> I mean, he has the criminal record for all those job descriptions. <laughs> yeah, uh, right, right. Doesn't he though? Set up for him. So I was going to go with best worst title drop. We'll get there when we get there. I, there was also one of our listeners at Platinum Night pointed out it also has the best worst passing of the Bechdel test. I'll mention that when we get there as well. But I'm going with best worst title drop. You'll, you'll know it when we get there. I'm not going to speak about this because it's my favorite part of the entire fucking movie and probably 90% of this podcast. Best worst delaying tactic. <laughs> we'll talk about it when we talk yep, about it. Yep, yep. I'm looking forward to it. All right, well, our listeners have been waiting way too long for us to tackle this bit of poison, so we're going to keep the break brief, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the dangerous misinformation that is Sound of Freedom. Oh, man, this is going to be so awesome. Tell me about it. Hey, guys, y'all excited for trick-or-treating? Uh, trick-or-treating? We're getting ready for Raycon's anniversary. Raycon's anniversary? Why are you excited for that? Because Raycon is celebrating their anniversary with a sale that you don't want to miss. Look, guys, everybody knows that Raycon's everyday earbuds are known for delivering high-quality audio and thoughtful features like a 32-hour battery life and a perfect in-ear fit for all-day wear and lasting comfort, all that at half the price of other premium brands. Of course, exactly. And don't forget that this past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon Power Tech. Well, thanks to everyone who's shown them support in the last six years, Raycon is offering 20% off everything on their site with select products up to 40% off. You know I've tried and love the Raycon wireless earbuds. They sent us a pair to try when they first became a sponsor, and we've bought two pairs since then. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse Raycon. Celebrate Raycon turning six with their biggest sale of the year going on now. Hurry now to buyraycon.com slash gam. And use the code BIRTHDAY to get 20 to 40% off site-wide. That's code BIRTHDAY at buyraycon.com slash gam to score 20 to 40% off. Buyraycon.com slash gam. 
All right, guys, thanks. Uh, but if you're not going trick or treating, why do you have pillowcases full of candy? Because we might get hungry. Obviously. I right, got it. Got it. All right, everyone, welcome to the first writer's meeting for The Sound of Freedom. Uh, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to the one and only Tim Ballard, whose amazing story we're here to tell today. It's an honor. It's an honor. Yeah. So, Tim, honestly, I, I think the best thing that we can do is for you to just sort of tell us your story in your words and then let us take things from there. Of course. So, as many of you know, I was a regular Homeland Security cop making the beat busting bad guys and trying to keep people safe. But eventually, the victimization I saw was too much. Me and my squad, we went rogue. We took the law into our own hands to stop those who would prey on children. So moving. What a hero. Now, remember there was one particularly bad shootout where it was just me and one other guy left. He didn't know how many bullets I had left, so I looked him right in the eye and I said, do you feel lucky, punk? Um, well, do you... That, sorry, that what? That's Dirty Harry. Uh, what now? The, the thing you just said, it's it's from the movie Dirty Harry, like exactly. Mm, no, I've never heard of it. Well, maybe just the same thing just happened to him, too. Dude, what are you talking about? It's obviously from Dirty Harry. But it wasn't until this menace came close to home for me that I knew how serious it was. My daughter was on a trip to France with some friends when she was... Abducted. Abdu you said, no, okay, this is taken. I see it. Taken. It's very obviously taken. You know what, Tim? I, I think we're good here. We could just we could just take things from there. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Hey, real quick, that statue of the lady in the fountain out in the front lobby, is that up for grabs or? Wait, no. What? It is not. Oh, well, then you guys should have put up a sign or something. Anyways, I'll see you. That guy fucked our statue, didn't he? Yup. <laughs> sure the fuck did. And we're back! <laughs> and we're going to start this off as all good movies start with the director going, thank you so much. I'm really <laughs> happy that you're here to see our movie. Uh, this is uh, Mont Monteverde is the guy's name, the, uh, the director, who, by the way, I will say, was uh, fairly competent in terms of directing a movie. That's the last compliment I will have for this film. <laughs> comes up and it says, based on a true story, there's no asterisk or anything. I thought Absolutely at the very not. least they'd have to spell true, T-R-E-W or some yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. Based on the true story of a guy wearing tactical sunglasses, I'm sure, right now. <laughs> No, he really not gonna be great. told us that story, guys. Yes, he, he did. It was a, it was tr the, the funny thing is that even Tim Ballard doesn't pretend anything in this movie is true. It's That's how full of shit it is. The only person who thinks this movie true is Jim Caviezel, and he is unwell. <laughs> yeah. I have an awful lot of cousins who think it's true, too, so there's that, too. Yeah, tell no, me about it. his cousin is Jim Caviezel. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. So I turned this on. The first thing I saw, who watched this, by the way? All right, first of all, Don't all of you, you, are you serious? for that. All of you spent $20 at Angel Studios or whatever. No. No, they didn't. Oh, good. Okay. Still, give $20 to, like, Planned Parenthood or something to offset it. Yeah. No. I'm going to kill some kids yeah, to I would offset, like offset the saved kids. <laughs> That's what we like to do. In atheism. So we open up on poverty in Honduras. We've got a kid practicing her rudiments with flip-flops. She's doing some drumming. Yeah. And a lady shows up and she's like, hey, how would you like to live happily ever after? And she's like, I would love that. And then she gives the dad, the dad comes in, mm -hmm. right? And she gives the dad a pamphlet. And I was like, child traffickers have literature? <laughs> I would love to see that brochure. Oh, I don't think... I... <laughs> is being a single parent tough, but the single life is appealing? <laughs> Child trafficking. So, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to pick up your novelty child trafficking pamphlets, where we've got them on sale in the back... So yeah, so she pitches the dad on letting her, his daughter and his young son join her modeling agency. And she's like, you just have to have him at this hotel at this time on this day, preferably with uh, no identifying marks on them. Okay, this is a weird thought. 
These are all weird thoughts. The vetting process for... Great. I was about to bring this up. Thank yes. you. Okay. It's weird. The vetting process for trafficking victims is wo- way more rigorous <laughs> yeah. than I would have guessed. She's like, she's like an NFL scout yeah. running them through like cones, Jump doing serpentine. And They're doing pull-ups. Yeah, no. But then uh-huh. the little brother gets sort of added last minute, right? He wanders into the room and she gives him like a, I know an adult that would fuck that kid. Oh, <laughs> I wanted a third sibling to walk in who's, like, not cute and for her to be like, so just the two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Jesus We're not Christ. one of those take-all-comers child traffickers, okay? Oh, okay. We're not the Catholic Church. Relax. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish they'd given me a bigger riser I could just throw myself off of if I needed to. So, yeah. So, Dad takes the little girl, um, Rocio, and the little boy, Miguel, to the kidnapping audition. And he, he goes in, and he, and, and he goes to walk in, and she's like, no parents. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that was insane. She was like, you have to leave for exactly 10 hours. And he's like, hold on, let me get a look in there. And then he's like, okay, well, those are it attractive, is a room. Yeah, attractive well, there's kids, a floor. Yep. models, checks out, and he leaves. Yes. <laughs> Which makes the rest of this movie... Not that interesting to me, right? Because you know he's just, he's just gonna get tricked out of those kids the second he gets them back. Again, right? Bugs Bunny I is gonna close rip your down eyes a and count to twenty. Yeah, yeah right. So. Bugs Bunny's gonna rip down a poster that says "traffic season," and he's gonna be like, "All right, here you go, kids." <laughs> Yo, oh, like are, rabbit season, fuck season. Yeah, there are. I believe that's traffic season, Doc. Oh, fuck season. There are four adults and a Wi-Fi enabled baby monitor watching my son right this yes, second. Right, right now. And he's chipped. Yeah, and he's chipped. <laughs> We're saying it's the parents' fault. You don't even oh, leave Jesus. him at preschool. I just dress up like another toddler and I'm like, this kid seems fucking awesome. I don't know about the rest of you, but I love graham crackers and that kid with the headphones. Am I right? This kid fucks. And then. And, <laughs> and then we get one of the most disturbing aspects of this movie, of course, and one of the things that the movie seems to have absolutely no sensitivity to whatsoever is that, like, this next scene is a montage of them sexying up a bunch of little kids, right? It's just a bunch of the, like, uh, like we get a, a solid 10, 12-minute montage, okay, it's probably not that long, of just them putting makeup on little kids and saying, oh, throw your hair back all sexy and stuff. And the movie is going like, isn't this disgusting? Can you imagine what kind of asshole would watch this shit? This movie crew had to have scouts doing the same yes. thing as yes. the cartel in the movie, yes. approximately. Yes! Like, I was waiting for Tim Ballard to, like, side-tackle his own scout and be like, oh, shit. <laughs> Karen, the whole thing. You're doing my movie about trafficking that I'm profiting off. Sorry. This brings up an important point, which is that there are two people who are going to watch this movie. Crazy people who think Tim Ballard supermaned his way through a window and saved all the children from being trafficked. And pedophiles who are like, I love three quarters of this movie. Yes, right. The ending was super sad where that super nice citizen got his baby taken away. But other than that, it was fucking awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of disturbing and man, they should have known better than to include that shot shots in this film. There's, so in our notes, we'll like highlight in red scenes where they think, oh, there's nothing there. There's nothing funny there. There is so much red highlight in these fucking notes. And a lot of arguing among us about yeah. like, I've got a really good bit. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. If you let you, me you bring... You put those fucking puppets away, goddammit. I did, told you not to even bring them on stage. If you let me bring the doll. <laughs> oh, no. I could do some space work. So, nope. Nope. So, so that night, dad goes back to pick up the kids, but there's nobody at that apartment. And by the way, no one in that entire building. The whole building was in on it. Right. Not shocking. Again, bad parenting for sure. And then he knocks on the neighbor's door. So like right. the modeling thing was in this apartment and he knocks on the neighbor's door. Like what the fuck was he going to say to the people in the next apartment if they answered the door? They don't, but he was going to be like, hi, hi. You don't know me. (laughs) Have you seen like a dozen attractive children? (laughs) I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Oh, it's it's crazy. There are people who do that, um, but they were here this morning. (laughs) Not me. I missed them. Against them. So, and then we get our credits over, Jesus, this is so fucked up, over security footage of actual children getting snatched. 
Which means that this movie is directly profiting from the kidnapping of those children. And, and it's all like misinformation bullshit, right? Because in almost all of these instances, if you actually look into where that footage comes from, in almost all of these instances, it's custodial kidnapping, right? It's, it's a, a dad who doesn't have custody kidnapping his child or whatever. So they're also misrepresenting it. A lot so, like one of the people who donated to this movie. Yes, did, right. yes, right, right. One of the producers. Literally got arrested for that. So then we, we, we cut to this dude on his computer. We're in California now. There's this guy scrolling through Wayfair, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently some people know the Wayfair story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, as best I remember, they were selling like big desks that sometimes had names. Yeah, like the Tiffany or the Tiffany. whatever. And people yeah. were like, there's a Tiffany missing. It's probably actually a kid. <laughs> yes. That they're buying for some guy, some QAnon guy actually bought a desk, yes. like the Miguel desk for 17 yes. grand. And he was like, and now we wait for the phone call and I'm going to nail this. Yes. Obviously, he never got the call, but at some point he must have called their customer service and been like, so I guess you'll uh, send Miguel to the drop point soon. And they're like, what the fuck? fuck are right. you talking Excuse about? Excuse me, I got a desk, okay? Yeah. This is, you guys suck. Yeah. Do you think when he got the desk, he like did like a, aha! <laughs> <laughs> or do you think he knew right away? The kid was going to be in the drawer? Right. <laughs> is, did he try the drawers or he's like, ah, I have a mental illness? Oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, man. So, so we've got this, we've got this pedophile. <laughs> So we got this pedophile uh, looking through his internet, and then we cut to outside where the where all the good guys are in their van getting ready to bust him. So they all go we, in. <laughs> we meet the good guys inside their unmarked van. I just yes. want to flag yep. that. Yep. We That's sure how they do. start. Yep. And they're going like, oh, we've got to get him before he logs out. Like, I'm looking at you, looking at him, looking at child porn. No, you don't. <laughs> That makes no fucking sense. But they're trying like to Like if he closes attention. the laptop in time, they like can't arrest him. Oh, right. Oh, God damn it. What's your, what's your pin? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Hold his face. You, yeah. think, you think we won't get this? One, 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 <laughs> one, you bet. I could do this all day. <laughs> one, one, one. It's locked. Two. Shit. Damn it. <laughs> so, so we get the cops going into Boston. There's a squeaky floorboard. Don't worry. It's just there to build tension. So he looks back. He doesn't see, he doesn't see anything. He goes to take a uh, sip of his coffee. Side tackled. <laughs> Literally side tackled, by the way. It's As if great, they're great. setting Heath up for a bit. Okay, it, actually, good story. I have a good story. Okay, so... So I'm buying a child. So I'm, <laughs> I'm setting this up. No. <laughs> I purchased the Miguel, and so I assume it's going <laughs> to... Right. Very quick context, not that at all. I've got a little bit of an unofficial stepdad role with somebody. It's awesome. Name is Kai. Kai. That's the creepiest human way you could have. I know. It, it, <laughs> I, he literally Unofficial stepdad conversation during this movie. Yeah, okay. I think. I've got a little bit of a stepdad <laughs> See, I'm no, working no, on it. No, no it's. See, Heath, what we're, what we're witnessing in real time Fuck. is Heath realizing why we have terms like girlfriend. <laughs> No, it's like fuck. My girlfriend's kid would totally work here and not be as lady creepy. friend is Anne, <laughs> child van is Kai. It's the names where I'm working this on. Is, yes, this is really clear. Okay, so and I got permission to tell the story from Kai. So this is legit. It was so Kai said. I told Kai that we're doing this movie, and I was like, it's that movie about the crazy guy who like side tackled people at Wayfair. Kai was like, oh, it's still in the theaters for a little bit longer. Let's go to a theater. And pretend you're trafficking me. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and we could get a crazy person to side tackle you, and it'll be a funny bit. And I was like, that's objectively the funniest bit that's ever been mentioned. Yep, yep. We start talking about it. Ann walks in and is like, what the fuck are you idiots <laughs> talking about? You're not going to a theater in Michigan where people can open carry an AR-15 dressing up like a child trafficker. So yep. we didn't do it. It was fun, though. Darn you could have had, like, a, a bigger of those things of popcorn, soda. <laughs> oh, no. Wayfair desks. Yeah, right. So. I've kind of got a stepson relationship going with someone right now. <laughs> 
All right, now that guy's trafficking. He needs so, an Antilla. <laughs> so anyway, so they arrest the pedophile. They check out his den of perversity. It's all child fuck dolls and VHS tapes. Also, he keeps extensive records of all the children he's trafficked with photographs and receipts. And it's, like whimsical selfies by yeah. the people. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be the like Woody Harrelson watching the tape moment, but because these people are idiots, they have like a photo of a child, then a photo of an adult with a child, then a photo of the child being like, Right? Like, you can do it as a fucking child molestation flip book, right? <laughs> it's the dumbest. <laughs> so, so then we get Jim Caviezel and his partner. They're getting home from a long day of protecting children from so- child sex traffickers. And the, and the partner is like, man, I don't think I can do this job anymore. You know, this is really rough. This is way worse than the murder scenes that I've been to. And um, he asks Jim Caviezel, he's like, so in your time here, how many pedophiles have you caught? He's like, 288. He's like, how many kids have you found? He's like, don't, don't be like that, man. No. <laughs> Come on. I was, we were having a good fucking time, and now... <laughs> and so Tim Ballard, Jim Caviezel, is like, I know like 10 middle-aged guys who are super good at dive rolls and side tackles. <laughs> and the other guy's like, I'm gone. I don't even want to know yep, your stupid yep, fucking yep. idea. Absolutely not. Sorry, so, Tim Ballard, is your opinion that the Department of Homeland Security has too much restraint? Yeah, that's what I'm yep, saying. Yep, that is exactly his point, yes. So he goes in to file some paperwork, and uh, like I know it's supposed to be a scene of him getting all fired up and angry at the at the injustice. But what we're watching is him scrolling through his extensive collection of child pornography. That's our experience and, and transcribing it, which I yep. don't think is a job they do. I think they probably have to do that for court purposes. Kowalski, but- get in my office. <laughs> I and- don't have time to watch all these child porns myself. <laughs> I need a brief summary at the top. <laughs> and a scene by scene yeah. analysis. And, that actually, and then those little dots that they have on the Pornhub videos that tell you when oh, each of the no. positions are. Okay, from. no, no. <laughs> when, the tone, when there's an inflection point in the tone. Okay. Yeah, I so, also want to know when most people turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That last thing might be useful for getting... Oh, no, you know, no, no. Getting oh. the criminals. No, okay. So, and isn't that what we're here to do? To as, yep. as, <laughs> so we have, uh, we, we have been watching this, and we see that for the first, but not the last time, we see a single tear roll down his cheek. Lots of manly crying in this one. <laughs> so he goes to the pedophile cell, and we haven't mentioned this yet, but of course the pedophile got his pedophile outfit from Pedophiles R Us. Yeah. Right? He's got the pedophile glasses, the pedophile mustache... It's like pedophile Groucho Marx was yes. like an existing thing. Right. Yep. He went it's to so Halloween silly. Adventure and he got like, guy not to leave your kids with. Yeah, plastic right. Plastic bag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he goes he couldn't to... get official pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have the rights. Yeah. didn't have the rights. <laughs> so yeah, so he, he goes to that guy's cell and he's like, hey, why don't you come take a walk with me? He's like, you know, it turns out I'm not actually a cop. I'm one of you. And if you could hook me up and help me out and get me children to have uh, sex with or whatever it is that you people do, I will get you out of jail. And the guy's like, I don't know if I trust you. He's like, have a cigarette. He's like, I completely trust you now. (laughs) One cigarette is like pedophile shibboleth. Yeah, right. And he's like, you're in. Absolutely. (laughs) That's not a good system, by the way. Also, (laughs) that's going to be awkward, right? You're just like, hey, do you want to have a cigarette? No. You happy with it? What are you nodding about? Wink. Absolutely. I get it. Wink. <laughs> Thanks for the cigarette. Wink. I'd love it if you wouldn't... End up with another desk. Wink. Yeah. Here's my so, question. Do other cops use that tactic, right? Are you arresting someone for drugs and you like lean forward and you're like, psst, I'm a drug dealer too. <laughs> We're going to get some... Yes, they do. Will you, will um, you sell me some drugs? <laughs> yes. And the criminal's like, Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but they have to give you a joint in this case. It's very slightly different. So, and then we, very quickly, we have to meet Tim Ballard's family, his wife and his nine children. It's so funny, because they're trying to do the typical, like, daddy's home, right? Where the one or two kids run up and run into dad's arm. But the scene takes 45 (laughs) minutes. Daddy's home. Daddy's home. Daddy's home. Daddy's home. 
Daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home, dad. It's too long for this bit I'm it's doing. Daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home. <laughs> They gotta learn a song or something. Yeah. 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 18 kids and counting. Come down the stairs at the same time. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Von Trapp style. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So, okay, so he ultimately, though. He... If this was a musical, it would have been more fun. Oh. <laughs> Spoilers. You say that way too much, man. Hey, if you didn't watch this movie, we're gonna tell you in a little bit what song is featured in this movie. I'll give you eight billion fucking guesses. <laughs> You're not gonna get it. All right. That's got that to look forward to. So, okay, so he brings the pedo guy home to befriend him. He brings, busts out his Homeland Security file. He's like, here's what we got. You got a lot. We got a lot of stuff on you, but I can make this all disappear as long as you can get me one kid to fuck, right? And they're also doing like a weird tea at this moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which I found, there was like a very delicate tea ceremony where it was like, you'll need to get me a bunch of kids. Ooh, orange pico. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Steal me a child. Sugar spoon? Yep. So... <laughs> We're pedophiles. So, yeah, so then we get them at a diner, and, and I, I guess now the pedo guy has, has found him a kid, right? He hands him a book, and he's like, look inside there. He opens the book, and it's the little brother from the opening scene, right? A little picture. It's not the kid. It's the picture of the kid. Be awesome. He wasn't that one. little. Yeah. Um, he opens the thing. Hollowed and he's out like, Bible with a toddler inside. Yeah. <laughs> Like one of those prank birthday cards, but it's screaming. Yeah. So, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, yeah, so he, he gives him yeah. the book. Yeah. Yeah, you felt that one, didn't you? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, guys. So he says, he says, like, I, I've hooked you up with this kid. You're going to have him all weekend. And the guy goes, you're under arrest. And the pedo guy's like, I did not see that coming somehow. <laughs> And then we, got it, we, we cut over to the U.S.-Mexican border because they know where the kid is coming in now, right? So they're going to bust the pedo guy's accomplice, right? And it's Mike Lindell. It totally... It's, 100% Mike Lindell. It's like Mike Lindell it fucks is Captain Kangaroo. Just perfect. Yes, those two things. I yeah. could not not think of Mike Lindell for the rest of this movie and be happy because yeah. it, go, it goes badly for him. Right, right yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so they bust him. There is an awesome moment where they're like, put your hands on the wheel, don't move. And then at, they say that as they're dragging him out of the car. This is complicated. I deserve this, though. Yep. Because yep. of the pillows. So. <laughs> okay, just idea. Maybe we arrest every person with mustache only. <laughs> right? I feel like the innocent mustache yeah, only good. people are good. taking a hit for the team on that. I like that we all scanned the room to see how funny we yeah, could find Yeah, right, it. right, exactly. Is this, is this bit going to work or no? All right. Okay, all right, I think we can... It is. It's all, yep. like, solid, full beard mustache yeah. around. A couple so, of you are really fluffing out the soul patches. <laughs> that, oh, this counts. Yeah. This counts. <laughs> yeah. Jazz. The Zappa. I'll allow the Zappa. Jazz, yeah, not pedophile. Jazz. Yeah. You're still getting so, arrested, to be sure, but, like, yeah. oh, we'll let you out. <laughs> if you clear... So then we cut to, we cut to the... Um, we cut to the hospital. There's this really awkward, like, we don't need this fucking scene, right? We get this scene where the, where the doctor comes out and, and tells Tim Bauer, so in case you're wondering, this kid that you just brought me was super duper raped. You did not get there on time. I couldn't have written this as a gross comedy bit more broadly. Yeah. The doctor's literally like, slam, man, that kid got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong. I've seen some fuck kids in my day, but that kid... <laughs> Oh, my God. I'm never going to go to one of those playgrounds that has the tunnel that kids can climb through. Oh, God. Yeah. Ever again. Don't need to. Why did I give you this information? No reason. I leave the... Yes! And then he leaves. We'll never see you There's again. No, he's just like, someone fucked the shit out of that kid, and that's my lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Several people in the hospital are like, dude, what? And he's like, all right. That's Good. Just, yep. Hey, hey, Nurse Sanders. Nurse Sanders. Kid in there? Fuck. Oh <laughs> I'm going to Quiznos. You want one? <laughs> Got a tankard for roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. Inter that's where the room is. The room is right there. Okay, so I'll stay right here, and I'll keep you. 
<laughs> All right. Interesting. Yeah, no, it's good calibration. Once you get to looks yeah. like it's yeah, that's 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 the bridge too far for them. So yeah, so so Tim Ballard, Jim Caviezel takes the kid out for a burger. There's this great moment where uh, the, he says to the kid, he's like, my name is, is Tim, or as you'd say in your language, Timoteo. God. And the, kid, and the kid's like, yeah, thanks for saving me, but fucking yikes, man. <laughs> I obviously speak English. Just say Timothy, asshole. <laughs> Come on. Waiter comes over. I think my friend will have some huevos ranchero. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Who are you well, helping with this? Man? We all know the words. So, and, and the way the kid reacts, though, I was sure that what this movie was going with was that the famous Timoteo is legendary amongst traffic children everywhere as the savior of all the... It wasn't. It wasn't no. that. It was actually completely random nonsense. He's like, I have your name on the back of a, of a necklace that my sister gave me. And we're like, oh, wow, will that ever be explained or make any fucking sense? No. Nope. No. Nope. Be a very upsetting MacGuffin. He, he might as well be like, the kid might as well be like, I got a sister in Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> Huh? So, so he says, um, he's like, well, do you think that the little kid, Miguel, he's like, hey, could you rescue my kidnapped sister too? And Jim Caviezel's like, hell, kid, that could be my whole inciting incident. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just do it real quick before you get me too and have to resign from your own fucking thing. <laughs> right. That's what really happened. That's a real thing. Really happened. So then we get like, a, Miguel starts telling him like his tragic backstory. We go back and we like see like the kids arriving in Colombia once they were first kidnapped. We see the part where the sister gives him the necklace, right? She's like, here, take this necklace. It's good luck. Right. And Miguel's like, is it though? <laughs> I really want to say we're crushing it with luck right now. I really this past, we're in a crate on a ship being trafficked. I yeah, wanted Miguel fuck. to just push it out the window and be like, okay, let's try this now. Yeah. <laughs> right. I would call this rock bottom, wouldn't you, Sith? <laughs> so. By the way, St. Timothy, I looked this up, patron saint <laughs> of stomach disorders. <laughs> so useful for watching the movie, I guess. I, see, I looked, I looked up who is the patron saint of kidnapped children. And the Catholic Church is like, man, we're not, we're not. Yeah. We didn't bother. You with that think one. we would send one against our own? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like Frank Castle becoming the Punisher. What do you yes. do? <laughs> so yeah, so so we get uh, they, they they bring the kids into this warehouse where they sell Miguel to Mike Lindell, and then we they, watch. They like, make it seem like that's where he chooses which kids to buy yes. and not buy which mm -hmm. is a very inefficient system to do that you should pick the kids before you ship them across the ocean in a secret because what are you going to do with the ones he's like ah oh, no I'm only taking two today because my car I got my car seat in and they're like oh god do you want to not give like economic do efficiency they, notes to the traffickers do they have to FIFO the kids like yeah, what's the <laughs> god let me so check the uh, expiration date on this. And uh, yeah. So, yeah, so he tells him this story. The kid tells uh, Tim Ballard this story. We back out of the flashback. Miguel is reunited with the dad. The dad's like, well, this is halfway to very good. This is like halfway to great. He's extremely unpsyched to see his kidnapped son. Yep. He's like, this is really like, he was the. I don't want to say consolation prize of my marriage, but like he's not the good The kid. first thing he says, the first thing, he is reunited with his son, holds his son in his arms, and then he turns to Tim Ballard with traffic child still in his arms and goes, can you imagine what it would be like to look into the empty bedroom of your child? And Tim Ballard's like, hey man, not in front of the upped kid, A eh, Faye, what are you doing, man? <laughs> yeah, so he's, but the, uh, the dad's talking to Tim Ballard and he like, He's like, oh, do you mind if I look at this picture of your irresponsibly large family? And he's like, no, no, go right ahead. And he looks at it, and there's this moment with the actor where he's just like, oh, Jesus Christ, that's too... Can I just... I'm short one, you've got too many. Can I just take one of yours? I got a, a bed no, no, and everything. I, I did not want to see your graduating high school class, Mr. <laughs> I wish to see your children. So yeah, so he's like, you know, the dad's like, oh, but you must find my daughter. And he's like, yeah, that's, I mean, I really did way more than anybody else in terms of bringing back your kids. So I feel like a thank you's in order. Yeah, what whatever. are you doing, dad? Just yeah, right. Home. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fucking welding or something. Yeah. So Tim goes home. He talks to his wife. Now, it's really weird that they keep putting the wife into this because they never name her. Right. They, like, she's like a woman in the fucking Bible. 
She's just Tim's wife. Well, knowing what we know about Tim Ballard now, <laughs> it has a real... Remember that movie, the documentary where the guy climbs the rock and, they, and then the Oscar speech, they were like, it was actually her journey, not climbing rock guy. That's what it feels like Tim Ballard tried to do with child trafficking as he was canceled while making this movie. <laughs> right, He was right. like, and of course, my extremely loyal wife, Kimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Miguel and the dad go to leave. They're going to fly back to Honduras. And the kid's like, I want you to keep this necklace that my sister gave me to remember me by. And he's like, this is literally the only thing you own. I'd feel like an asshole. And the kid's like, no, take it. He's like, all right, fine. It'll take be it. Good. I want to see if you get kidnapped. I have a theory. <laughs> I'm working with a hypothesis. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess you can consider this incident the fuck incited, which makes this a perfect time for us to take a quick break. We'll be back in a minute with even more Sound of Freedom. <laughs> well, hey there, podcast listener. I hope you're enjoying the live show. We sure did have fun doing it for you. We sure did, Eli. Saying mean things about bad people is the best. But did you know that you're just days away from having us use that meanness for you? That's right, podcast listener, for you. Because once again, Vulgarity for Charity is here. But Heath, what's Vulgarity for Charity? Vulgarity for Charity is an annual charity drive jointly produced by Puzzle and a Thunderstorm and our buddies Tom and Cecil over at Cognitive Dissonance. A charity drive? For what charity? Why, modest needs, of course. A tax-exempt charity that gives emergency grants to low-income folks who are at risk of slipping into poverty and for whom no other source of immediate help is available. Hmm, how do they do that? A whole bunch of ways. They negotiate directly with the places funds need to go. They often contribute from their own funds. They screen their candidates, and the money always stays in the hands of a licensed 501c3 charitable organization. So you can donate without worrying about sketchy money ending up somewhere it shouldn't. You can help a single mom fix her car, or a furloughed dad get back on his feet, or just help someone get through a difficult time in their life when they need help. I don't know, guys. What's in it for me? Okay, weird way to set that up. Yeah. So during the drive, donors who give $50 or more to Modest Needs can send a copy of their donation receipt to vulgarity for charity at gmail.com, all spelled out in words, with a request for a roast of the person of their choice. The donor can request anyone or actually anything to be roasted. We'll be selecting 100 random roasts of all the submissions and also our top 100 donors. And over several podcast episodes, you'll get to hear them. Please keep in mind, if the person or thing isn't famous, then the donor should also send an image and maybe a short description so that they can get a proper roast. And don't get us sued. Please. One more time, you can send your proof of donation of $50 or more to vulgarityforcharity at gmail.com from November 1st to midnight on Thanksgiving. But don't wait. The 100 random spots go first, so they go fast. Vulgarity for Charity. Deep inside me is an infinite well of hate, which can um, sometimes be used for good. Huh. I don't think that's the catchphrase, right? I, I feel like it should be. Right? On the logo? Yeah. It's actually pretty good. Thank you. And we're back live from Las Vegas. <laughs> and we're going to rejoin the action here with Tim going to see Mike Lindell in prison. Right? <laughs> and he offers him this... Yeah, right, right. No, he offers us this weird ultimatum where he's like, hey, look, man, we can send you to Colombia where you will be raped in prison for the rest of your life. Or we can keep you in America where you will be raped in prison for the rest of your life. <laughs> so are you into white guys or what? What is your preference here? I really wanted him to try I'm a pedophile too again. <laughs> I thought he was going to do it again. He's, he's one of those guys that's just got one move. He's just like... <laughs> The okay. corner sweep of catching pedophiles. Cigarette? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get a, like a montage of him investigating the shit out of the missing daughter, trying to figure out where she is. Oh, right. And that's when he calls up somebody and he's like, hello, Mexico. <laughs> yes. Yes. Colombia, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is Tim. Yo quiero missing girl. He hung up. <laughs> he hung up. We're going to have to go... I should have said Timoteo. God damn it. We're going to have to go to Colombia, Mexico. The system is bent against me. <laughs> I called España and no one answered. 
What do you mean you're European? That's fucking crazy. I, I pushed they you for Spanish and still. So <laughs> I did find out where the library is, though. So because <laughs> <laughs> he does Donde Esta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we get a scene too where like Tim is presenting the case to his boss. He's like, "All right, boss." I want to go to Colombia and rescue this missing girl. And he's like, but you're not the police of Colombia. And Tim is like, stop treading on me. <laughs> and his boss's counter, which is fucking awesome, is, okay, fine, but don't spend too much money, okay? Yeah. It yeah. gets real wackety schmackety do, which is super funny because the real story behind this is that Tim Ballard just would go to countries and be like, I'm doing a sting operation and rent himself a five-star hotel room and be like, someone's going to offer me a kid at any minute now. Yes. Yeah. No one who fucks kids would order this much room service. Yeah. <laughs> so Tim Ballard's way of getting back at the man who yelled at him for renting five-star hotel rooms was to be like, when I'm writing my movie, I'm going to say that you were super cheap about all the child saving I didn't do. <laughs> so I, I do want to be super... I want to push back a little bit on that in that I want to be clear that Tim Ballard did not write this movie. I only want to emphasize that because Tim Ballard is not talented enough to do any fucking thing. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Tim and Ballard I don't want types to with two credit. fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Six. Oh, I hit a T. Where's the delete button? He's always doing dive rolls. It's hard to yeah, type. Yeah, right, you know? exactly. I love to, because the boss has this whole moment where he's just like, he's like, look, man, we all know that you, Tim Ballard, the real person, are <laughs> fucking awesome and a legend, <laughs> and everybody thinks that you're really cool and wants to hang out with you, but you can't just go to Colombia and invade a sovereign country to get this kid back. And he's like, oh, man. <laughs> and then the boss is like... It's fine, though. I'll tell the White House you're doing, like, a TED Talk in Colombia yeah. on, like, feminist theory or something. It'll be fine. There's, we'll, yeah, there, there's a very, like, okay, I'll let you misappropriate public yeah, funds right. this time, but always make me... Yeah, right, right. Nuggie, nuggie. So, so he flies to Colombia where he has a ready-to-go... Apparently, America just has ready sidekicks in all the different countries... Right? So that, like, there's somebody to meet you there at the airport. That's nice. I didn't know we'd do that. So the sidekick USA? is like... <laughs> the sidekick's like, look, I know all about the plot up to this point. I've watched the first act. I have a non-police contact who should have information for us. So just a guy. A guy. a guy. That would be That'd a be guy. guy. Yeah. And A missing kids guy that you have. Yes. Yeah. Right. Now, in case you needed evidence that this story is... Because, like I said, Tim Bauer didn't write this movie, but he did, like, tell them the story that they wrote it based on, right? And if you ever needed more evidence that he was just making shit up as he goes along, it will come in the form of the names of every ancillary character in the film, right? Because he's like, so who's this non-police contact? He goes, Vampiro. That's... That's Spanish for vampire, by the way, in case you're not aware. He's, he's, he claims the guy's actual name is Batman, and he was like, I switched it to Vampiro. <laughs> <laughs> because bats. Oh, is that real? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to invade that's, 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 that's a real of... Tim Ballard thing. Oh Batman? Right, right. <laughs> I thought calling him Batman would seem a little silly. <laughs> Plus, we couldn't get the fucking rights. Yeah. So, yeah, he's like the fucking spirit Halloween Batman, I guess. Um, <laughs> so, no, but apparently Vampiro used to launder money for the Colombian cartels, and he did some jail time, and then ever since then, he spent his time trying to make up for all the evil drug money stuff he did by buying trafficked children, but then setting them free. Which is not a good way to end <laughs> child trafficking. No! You're funding traffickers. Yes! Yes! You're That's creating like like, demand. I'm anti-meth, so I buy meth from everyone in town and yeah. then I flush, flush it, it down, down the, the toilet. Yes! yes. <laughs> so fucking dumb. So they have a sit-down... You down. might call me Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't get to say this that often. Batman uses his money better than Batman. Does. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so they have a sit-down meeting with Vampiro, and Vampiro is great. First of all, this character, every time you see him, he's got this much of a cigar left, like he buys him used or something. He's always smoking this tiny little stub of a cigar, and he's always in a smoke-filled room. 
I guess those two are probably related. And he goes, he sits down, Tim Ballard sits down and he goes, okay, rule one, you obviously look like a fucking cop. Stop it. Just right. stop. You got the curly Q earpiece, like a secret service. Guy. Right. It goes to nothing. I can see it goes to nothing. You're an imbecile. You need to, yeah, he actually says almost exact words. You need to look more like Mike Lindell. Yeah. To pull this off. Right. right, yeah. Yeah, they're going to teach him to look like an American pedophile. And there's also this, this weird moment where he goes, so, you know, when you, when you rescued that kid from, from child trafficking, how mm -hmm. did it feel? And he says, good. Not a great answer. Nope, nope. And, but then Vampiro tries to dig in and he goes, yeah, but are we talking back rub good or chicken wings good? I don't even know what's the high and low end of that scale. That's a weird <laughs> That's scale. So weird. I guess Especially because it's implied that freeing a child sex slave is somewhere, somewhere in, in the between. middle. Somewhere in between, yes, those two yes. Between, between back, back rub, rub and chicken wings. I could free a child, but I could get a chicken wing also. Hmm, yeah, no, I guess when you're trying to get like approved by the Dove channel, you can't go, all right, so having an orgasm or, right? So I guess back rub is doing the stand-in work for that. Oh, and there's also great, he goes like, so why are you doing this, Tim Ballard? And he goes, ah, uh, because I am a religious fucking lunatic. <laughs> Is this when he says, God's children yes. are not for sale? Yes. Exact quote. And they are, though. They I, are. Okay. So God's price is somewhere below the current market equilibrium yes. that he allows as the omnipotent he, there's, God. There's a price for them in his book. Yeah. God is the invisible hand that guides the market for child <laughs> trafficking. Children. That would be like if we announced during intermission, our T-shirts are not for sale. <laughs> They are, by the way. We, we have brought them right in the band. It's a lovely tri-blend. Yeah. It's very soft. Tri-blend. You can buy a child from us, too, if you want. <laughs> but you got to offer us a cigarette so we know you're cool. <laughs> so now, um, Vampiro might have a lead, though. He says, you know, I know a, a lady, and I, I, her, her name in the movie is Giselle. I could not not write Ghislaine in it every time yeah, she course, showed yeah. up. But... <laughs> But, but she's, the, she's that Honduras Scott talent lady from before. They're like, she's probably involved. Because I guess there are like, I, I guess child traffickers are like Batman villains. There's just the six of them, you know? And you're like, yeah. this is the work of the penguin here yeah. or whatever. No, but she was Miss Honduras or something like that, right? Yes. That's what they're saying. Uh -huh. that, that talent portion was very upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> so, Her answers to the questions were weird. Weird, right? Her weird questions. <laughs> Should have stopped the talent yeah, portion before it happened after those. Why would you want Answers. an unmarked vent? You know what? It's fine. There's also, there's this great moment where, um, where Tim tells him, he's like, well, let, let's set up a meeting with her. Just tell her you've got a horny, hungover, rich American looking for a little pedo action. And I immediately thought of Matt Gates. Did everybody else, when I said yeah. that, you pictured that thing that you were picturing in your mind? She's like, ooh, Matt is in town. Nice. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, I know it's just because Jim Caviezel went crazy because he told people to punch him in the face while he was pretending to be Jesus. But he makes an acting choice in this scene that is so fucking bizarre. He is having the child trafficking <laughs> described to him, and he gets so distracted. Here's the details of the art. What are you doing? I'm telling, you the detail. I'm telling you the details of child. Are you? <laughs> uh, you want to focus up? Are you batting a shiny object? Eli is now imitating a cat trying to get a laser pointer light. I felt myself about to throw myself on the ground. And so I yeah, no, I was going to say. The cast feel like of this I... show and the edge of stages yeah, and... don't go well together. Yeah. <laughs> Trafficker definitely actually got away from Tim Ballard because of like laser pointer. Yeah, yeah right, no right. Yeah. In real life. Yeah. Or they didn't give him a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, 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 this guy's fine. <laughs> so, but he called, so, so he had this scene where he's like, he's trying to figure out how he's going to get this kid back, how he's going to get, because they tell him that, that Giselle only deals with the child traffickers that she knows, right? There's no way to get to her. He has to get on child trafficking telegram. And like, right, oh right. So that's going to be a whole big thing. Uh, you mean Telegram? <laughs> so, um, so, but he calls him up. He's got a plan. He's like, he's like, all right, what if? Now, hear me out. We build a child sex hotel. What? I'm not done yet. Okay, I hope you're not. <laughs> so, 
He goes, we're going to pretend that we're franchisees from Club Bangkok, and we're trying to open up a new subway sex hotel. <laughs> Quiznos. Wayfair, yeah. No, we're going to open up our own child sex trafficking hotel in Colombia, and then we'll tell all the child traffickers to bring as many kids as they possibly can, and that way we'll, we'll make sure we get the girl we're looking for. Now, I want to be super clear. The organization that Tim Ballard founded, Operation Underground Railroad, does this. This is how they actually operate. They go into these towns and they're like, we want to buy as many trafficked children as you can. Here's the money. What this does in reality is creates demand for child sex trafficking. People go and kidnap children to satisfy those orders, right? Just to be clear, want to make sure, like I said, nothing funny about that, but I just can't make it through the review without mentioning that in case anybody wasn't aware. Anyway, so, uh, so the guy says, well, you know, the, the uh, Vampiro, he says, well, you know, we'd need a lot of money to pull this off. We'd need to make it really look like we had the money to build a hotel. And he's like, don't worry, I have a billionaire friend who always gives me money as long as I pretend that it's, I mean, as long as it's about child sex trafficking. <laughs> Right? And, and again, very clearly, this is how his whole scam started. Right, He happened to know this billionaire guy that would donate money as long as it was for child sex trafficking. And he's like, yep, that's why I need a five-star hotel in Colombia for three months, because of the child sex trafficking I'm fighting. Right? And you're a part of it. Yes, right, right. And you get to do dive rolls. We'll get there. Later, Michael Douglas is going to be by, and we're going to pretend to be mobsters and beat him up. <laughs> That's a very old movie. If you yeah, laughed at so, that joke, your back hurts. <laughs> For the younger generation, Michael Douglas was an actor. It's fine, you know him. So, Vampiro knows a guy in the pedo business. Of course, he buys kids to free him, so he knows everybody in the pedo business. So he, he approaches this guy about his fake child sex hotel plans. What's the guy's name? <laughs> it is El Calacas. <laughs> which means skeleton in Spanish. So we have vampire and skeleton. They named these fucking characters in honor of our spooktacular. Oh, I wonder if the real one was like, was like Skeletor or something. <laughs> they couldn't get the rights yeah. to that. <laughs> Just but, be fucking Dave or whatever. Yes, it's not, you're like an arch horrible criminal. No. Don't have weird... You don't want to buy a kid from a guy named Dave. That's insane. You want skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who did you buy your kid from? Steve? No, come on. But again, Chris does not have a child for you to traffic. Skeleton! The fans of this movie thought Wayfair was who they were buying I from. thought, like, I again, I, I felt like he was just making shit up. As, like, like, I thought the next child trafficker was going to be named fucking Sombreros or whatever. Frankenstein! Yeah. So... So they bring in El Calacas to this, to this ridiculous... I know, right? But I have to... So they bring Dave into this ridiculous Thank hotel you. that they've got. Thank you. And they're like, you know, we need 50 to 60 child sex slaves at least. At least. And he's like, well, to do that, we'd have to form the child sex trafficking Avengers. <laughs> Like, th like, this movie really, like, ramps up like we're about to do an, ass an assembling the team montage. And then it does! It does! And then they do that. We get a, you son of a bitch, I'm in for child trafficking. Yes! Yes! Some guy's, like, cutting fish in a marketplace, and the door opens, and he says, Sorry, we're closed. <laughs> or are you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 And it's not like they need, like, a chemist and a lock picker. Yeah, and, right, right, exactly. And a poet. And a, it's just like, we'll need a child sex trafficker. And, and another. Another child. Okay. Yep. We, are we doing a jaunty montage? This is a bad idea. Yeah, so, we should just cut. So El Calacas And the guy who can away. fit in a really small box. <laughs> <laughs> they do need a grease. A grease yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yep. Then we get like a scene where the boss is chewing him out for how expensive all of this shit is. How expensive building a fake hotel is. Okay, this was fair. The boss is like, hey man, please don't send me emails that say I need money to incorporate Sex Hotel LLC in fucking <laughs> Columbia. HR is being a real pain in the ass about it. Here at Homeland Security. You want to tone it down? Hey man, did you expense hot tub full of babies? <laughs> First of all, you put it under automotive. And I know the app doesn't have that many options, but... 
You got to take this seriously. Say other, at least. Christine sends me all of these. It's, <laughs> I have to go through these now and fix well, them. But on also, the she's listening to this call. I'm she's logged in, and she's lo- I can see she's logged in on the back end of the system. <laughs> But also, another criticism of Tim Ballard's style of rescuing children here is that, like, I'm on boss's side here. He's like, look, man, you spent all this money on this hotel to try to prove to everybody that you're a billionaire that can afford to do this. All this. Like, if we just took that same money and we gave it to at-risk youth that would kicked out of their houses for being gay or whatever, that would do so much more to ameliorate child sex trafficking. Communism, Than no. trying to find this one, yeah, right, right. So, but the boss is like, I need to see results, damn it. This is setting up the turn in his badge and gun moment. We'll get that just momentarily. So we have the scene where he's like with Vampiro afterwards going like, man, it's all this red tape and bureaucracy. And he's like, you know, that's why I made millions of dollars laundering money for the fucking drug cart. So this isn't going where I wanted it to go. Never mind. <laughs> Vampiro, do you have a uh, tragic backstory you'd like to hear? <laughs> Perhaps for your uh, Oscar bid? Yeah. Do you have an Oscar bid? Oh, God. The bid is so bad, too, because he's like, you know, I got out of jail after all of this shit, and I'm, I'm going through, um, you know, trying to find a meaning to live, and so I, I bought me a prostitute. Really bad start, man. Yep. <laughs> to your story. And he's like... Adult, he, or...? Well, that's, that's... And the fucked up thing is, is that he does this in a way... Like, he goes, and it hit me after she was about to leave. Hey, wait a minute. She's not 25. Why 25, right? If you'd said 19, because it's going to turn out the girl was 14 in his story. Right. If you said 19, maybe I could put 20 fucking five. Fuck you. Yeah, we would have had to rent a screen and everything, but I wanted to play a little game with the audience, 14 or 25, just to see how universal that experience is. (laughs) This is why we're not allowed to say the name of the hotel. Yeah. (laughs) What's weird is they actually have that down on the casino floor. You can play yeah. that. Yeah, you can win a lot of money, yeah, actually, yeah. I made a killing on it. Um, no, he's it's... doing very well. No, it's good if I, if I do well. That's a good thing. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's like, and that was, what, that was my good guy turn. I realized that I had, I had just raped a 14-year-old, and that's when I decided to be a good guy. Woo! <laughs> also religion or something yeah yeah to be clear he's like and then i spoke to god yeah. right mm-hmm. and god said i run a market for child sex that's the context here <laughs> i need you to help provide liquidity by buying up some of the shares <laughs> oh god i'd like it's you to complicated that enough, no questions please <laughs> i'm god <laughs> just do it i wanted god to just be like oh shit you did just what Oh, God. <laughs> oh, me, man. <laughs> I was catching up on my Insta, and I, uh, I meant to intervene before. So, <laughs> no, it's tricky. 14 and 25, it is tricky. It is so, tough. It's all Vegas game based on it. It yeah. is tough to tell you guys apart sometimes. So, so then, the, like, he, he, we get the, so the, the boss has now told Tim Ballard, he's like, hey, look, man, you need to pack it up and come home. You can't rescue that girl. Damn it, you spent too much money building your child sex hotel. Um, and he's trying to decide, do I want to go rogue? So he calls his wife. His wife is on board. She's Mormon. She doesn't have a choice. <laughs> She's not allowed to have contrary opinions. This moment was fun. He's like, hey, honey, so you know how I always talk about starting up the band again in the garage? <laughs> Good news, it's not that. I'm going to start a sex hotel as a honeypot to meet pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, well, that's very Mormon of you, if nothing else. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. And she's like, I support you because it's required by the religion. And <laughs> Book of Timoteo, that's how it works. <laughs> to be fair, Anna responds that way to all my hobbies, so I get yeah, no, it. Your... I'm into race cars now. Sure. Yeah, whatever. Build a big hotel. <laughs> trap the race cars in them. <laughs> so he... That's what Vegas is doing right now. <laughs> so he quits his job. And then we get this scene where he's like, okay, so what is, what's happening in the movie is that he's now trying to convince the billionaire to fund his independent child rescue thing. But the movie does that bit where the sound starts before the scene starts. So we hear him <laughs> t- doing this pitch, and he's on an airplane. And I was so confused. 
for just a second you think that he's just striking up conversation with the guy next to him on the airplane. And the conversation is, and I quote, did you know that there are 22 million new images of child pornography on the web every year? Hey man, what the fuck are you talking about? No. So if it had been, yeah, if it had been the guy in the next row, that would have been amazing. In my head, it was like, okay, Tim Ballard, long plane ride. Hey, myself. Do you know any fun facts <laughs> about the amount of child porn? Let's say it to ourselves right now because he's not, his mouth isn't moving. You're right, right. But then I was like, oh, it's crazy editing that made that seem insane. Yeah. He's talking to the billionaire now. Right, yeah. But the billionaire, it feels less like a you need to help us, we're gathering the Avengers, and more like a timeshare pitch for child porn. Right, yes, yeah. yeah. Right, there's a huge market for this shit. It's blowing up, yeah. You can only sell a bag of cocaine once, but you can sell a child over and over and over again. That's now. literally the line in the fucking That was movie. the line. And if you sign up two billionaire friends and they <laughs> sign up two billionaire It's like a tetrahedral scheme. Let, here, get, let me take this child and turn it into a corkscrew for you. It's very cool. <laughs> That's how sharp this child prostitution is. Okay. But the billionaire fucking passes yes. on this pitch. And I had, this is the, my only moment of sympathy for Tim Ballard. He's like, hey man, this is fucking Shark Tank. You took the meat, you don't get to pass on saving the kids. And then finally he like gives the picture of the little girl. Yeah. Uh -huh. which, is, which is a weird tactic, right? Oh, I guess you're not convinced by my super weird speech timeshare pitch? Well, here's a picture of a child currently being trafficked, and he's like, oh, you got me, the yes. old heart string. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So Pablo's gonna fund it. We get the scene now where the good guy Avengers are all coming together. That's, that's Pablo the billionaire, Vampiro. Does Sidekick ever get a fucking name? Sidekick never gets, no. I wrote it in my notes. I feel like if I made up one fifth of an anti-child trafficking Avengers and I didn't get a name, I would be so fucked. Especially the guy who fucked a kid. He gets a name, he gets a monologue. Yes. I picked you up from the fucking airport. Yes. Which is a nightmare, right. by even the way. Hawkeye got a fucking name. And I don't even get a fucking name. Yeah. I fucked zero kids. <laughs> Tim? <laughs> Damn it! So they're having this. I didn't even get to stay in the fancy hotel. <laughs> How come you get to be the fake? Just billionaire? showed up at the end to fake kick you in the back. Yes. 1997 Mazda. <laughs> so, so they all get together. They're having their little mission briefing. They found the perfect property for their fake sex hotel. They do a montage. They show us like, and we rented a nice WeWork spot. It's got... Yes, they, they rent some very nice offices. It's got lemon water. Nice. <laughs> so weird. They're at the WeWork and they're like, this business is taking advantage of people. This is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's also this great moment. And again, this like they give away the game on their scam here, right? Because they have this moment where they're, they're like teaching Pablo, the billionaire, to be an undercover child sex predator hunter, right? Now, I should say, if you want a, 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 a very depressing laugh, Vice has done a couple of exposés now on this organization that Tim Ballard started, where they talk to people that worked with the organization and got this training that Pablo's getting in the movie, and they basically all say, it was like we were at fucking summer camp. They literally, literally gave them a scavenger hunt as part of their training to rescue kidnapped children. What? Mm -hmm. well, a scavenger hunt. You do not want to see that list. Okay, thank you. You do not want to see that list. Fuck. It's not good. But yeah, but they're, but they're doing this bit where, like, it's so stupid. They've got um, Vampiro, who is a short, bearded, overweight uh, Hispanic gentleman walking up to Pablo and going, hello, I am a 14-year-old girl. It's so nice to meet you. And he's got to like pretend that he's a pedophile. And they're like, no, you're being too stiff, man. You're being too it's stiff. Really I, not I wanted good. him to do the Mr. Pink scene from the fucking uh, Reservoir Dogs, right? He's in the mirror just being like, I love to fuck kids. Love to <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
In the movie, it's close to that. It's pretty it really close. is. Because it's like Mia close. Moore, and he's like, hello, today, stupid. Okay, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> Start over. Start over. Mia Moore, let's fuck some kid. No, <laughs> too strong. Heath, I have a too broad strong. swing that might really lose the room. Okay. Are you ready? Let's, I let's, don't let's, like let's, the sound of this. Let's take at this all. swing hard. All right. Let's do. Wait. Hold on. Let me position myself. Noah's so gonna I can distance himself in front of this from us visually. Smart. It's yeah. smart. Because it's rare that I'm like, mm, I don't know about this one. <laughs> room, I am room terrified. Full of people. Yeah. Let's do our best, Mia Moore. Am I saying me? Am I? The... You do first, then I'll go. I'll be the kid. And they're gonna say who's the best pedophile. <laughs> I'm gonna. Oh, we're gonna go each once. No, yes. we're not. <laughs> I'm, I am diving in front of this joke. So, and that is the dynamic of our podcast. In case anyone's wondering how the show works, I'm getting all the behind the scenes shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> you're gonna say me a more. What? So, I, I believe, Heath, you just won best pedophile in the room. I don't... You're Thank like, you! He's got to shave the beard now. Thank you. I feel like Steve Harvey right gotta now. Got to offer me a cigarette. So, so we cut over to Bogota, where apparently we weren't already. <laughs> but the pedophile Avengers are going into town to meet the anti-pedophile Avengers... And I like they brought in the the other guys and they're introducing them. I'm like, I want one of them to be named Mummy and one of them to be named Swamp. Things so, so fucking bad. bad right now. But no, they were Dave and, and when Giselle. I wrote the Pedophile Avengers are meeting the Anti Pedophile Avengers. Clippy came up and was like, Hey, do you want to stop doing this job? <laughs> <laughs> you want to sell some thumbs again, man? It's you want to like drive for Uber? <laughs> Anything would be better. So, so yeah, but uh, Giselle looks at the, at the anti-pedophile Avengers and she looks specifically at Pablo, the billionaire who we just saw like was having trouble like pulling off his New ass. guy. And she's like, you don't seem much like a pedophile to me. And he's like, I'll fuck a kid right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, she, she, it was actually smart on her. She was like, name your favorite pedophile thing. And he answers like Sarah Palin trying to name a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I like... All oh, the pedophiles. The kid man. parts. <laughs> what do calf. I <laughs> what? What do I love most about fucking kids? <laughs> Hard to pick just one. <laughs> I think he actually said depends on the day or something. Yeah. Like yes, that. right. Well, right. no, Tim Ballard comes in and saves him with like the good answer. He's yes. like, we all love to fuck kids here. I don't think we need to. We all know it's elbow. We all offer people <laughs> cigarettes when they ask for them. Okay, we're all cool here. And she said, she's like, all right, you guys are pedophiles. I get it. He goes, yeah, no, he steps in and he's like, look, we need uh, 50 kids. We'll give you $100,000. I'm like, that's better than Wayfair's pricing. <laughs> it's because they're buying in bulk. Right. <laughs> Well, this movie's pretty sure something's going to happen any second now, so we're going to take a break to prepare for it, but first I'm going to give Act 3 the hard sell. Will OUR rescue adult women who do sex work voluntarily? Will they literally kidnap those women, put them in a house, in a room they are not allowed to leave to the point where they tie bed sheets together to escape and go back to the brothels they were rescued from? Will this movie conveniently leave that detail out? <laughs> Find out the answers to different questions and less when we return for the tactical dive rolls conclusion of Sound of Freedom. Little Timmy. Little Timmy. God, is that you? Yes, Little Timmy. Your pain and your suffering is over. Come, come to heaven. Oh, boy. Wait, who, who's that? Oh, hey, I, I'm the guy who was trafficking you. I, I actually also died in that car crash. Oh, you did? Yes, Timmy, he did. Okay, but um, he's not going to heaven, right? Uh, so here's, here's the thing about that, actually. Yeah, so I can tell it. I actually sincerely begged for forgiveness from God right before I died. So looks like we're both in, T-Dog. Cool, right? Nope, not cool. Not at all cool. Like, super, obviously not at all cool. Okay, well, I don't know what to tell you, kid. Rules are rules. Um, Mr. God? You're, 
you're not really going to let that happen, are you? Uh, I, 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 hey, uh, how would you like to sit at my right hand? Is this uh, child sex trafficker also going to be there? Yeah. Then no, I'm good. No, thank you. Man. <laughs> Ungrateful. You should have seen him when he was alive. Okay, okay, dude. And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with the Colombian police staking out uh, the island where they're going to build their fake sex hotel uh, in advance of the big night. And I, I should emphasize that too, right? Because the OUR and Tim Ballard, the, the legend is, is that they go and they bust these people. They don't. Local police bust everybody because you can't just go arrest people from other countries, right? That's not how it works. Crazier still, sometimes they're just like, hey, you're welcome. We set up a bunch of child prostitutes to come to this hotel on Thursday. Yes. Are Fix you it. in? <laughs> yeah. And the local cops have to be like, sure, I guess we can get a team together. I guess yeah. we have to now. Right. Well, and then, of course, very often, and this is a big problem for them, very often those, those local police don't have the services to take care of the children that are liberated in their raids. So many of them just wind up wandering off on their own with no support whatsoever. Sorry, we're supposed to be getting back into a comedy podcast. Shit. Damn it. So, all right, so the traffickers show up. Fuck, this isn't helping. They, what, uh, what's the, okay. <laughs> What's the name of the trafficker's lawyer who shows up? It's, it is meat. Okay, it actually is carne. Yes. Carne. Yes. Meat ESQ. Hats. <laughs> so the Marquis de Sada. <laughs> All right, that's really fucking good. All right. So, yeah, so, so, the, uh, so the child tra- traffickers show up uh, with their lawyer, Meat. Um, now, Carne is, a, is, is the muscle, right? He's there to, like, be a, an intimidating, scary guy. So, so, but they all have to, they, like, bring a bunch of kids, and they're like, but the girl that they're looking for, the, the sister, Rocio, isn't among them. So now they've just got to make nice with the pedophiles for like a couple hours waiting on the rest of the kids to show up, right? Right. And keep in mind, this is supposed to be, they're supposed to be a bunch of like crazy American billionaires who are there to fuck kids. So they're stalling the kid fucking. Yes. Right. Half of the kids that they apparently want to fuck are there and they're like, oh yeah, I can't wait to fuck those kids. But first, pigs in a blanket. Pigs yes. in a blanket. Right. <laughs> Pigs in a blanket. Have you guys no, ever played euphemism. code Pigs names? Pigs in a blanket. <laughs> yeah. You want to play code names? April cheats, and she is at this party. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should do wavelengths instead. Yeah. So and and muscle lawyers start to get suspicious, right? Carne is starting to wonder. He's like, hold on a second. You guys, are you guys even real pedophiles? Because there's like 30 rapeable kids there, and you guys are having pigs in a blanket, and they're like, oh. I can rape a kid. I I would. I mean, I just I we had to. Thai food <laughs> for for breakfast. So you know we're a little well, full. And and then of course we have this hero turn for uh, for Tim, right? Because Carney is like, okay, well, fine. I'm raping that one. And so he grabs this kid and he goes to walk off with him. And then Tim Ballard's like, stop. I wanted to rape that one. <laughs> May, I'll pick. I want that kid, and I wanted it to keep going. I right, wanted, yes. I wanted Carne Esq to be like, oh, okay. Then uh, I'll pick that other one. Nope, that <laughs> one. I'm also. I'm oh, gonna fuck that one too. I'm having a three way. Okay. By the end of the scene, he's just got all the kids behind him. I can't wait to fuck all these kids. <laughs> you, you're gonna. You're gonna fuck all of them now. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, now? Na- <laughs> sure. Yep. <laughs> I can't, I can't, can't do it while you watch. Here we go. Go ahead. I'm an attorney. Sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Start with a fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. E- Eli, I am trying my damnedest to rescue from the, you from this I pantomime. Have, I have 10 minutes of this, this nope, pantomime nope. left. <laughs> it only becomes illegal at minute nine. <laughs> I ran it by car name. So, 
So Tim sneaks off. He calls the SWAT team. He's like, hold on, there's more kids coming. And then at this moment, you see Carne walking off with the kid, right, that he was, that, that, that Tim told him not to take. So we have the moment where, like, the two of them face off. And he's like, you can't rape that kid. And the lawyer's muscle pulls out a gun and puts it right at Tim Ballard's head. Right? And he's like, I'm going to rape that kid. And he's like, no, you're not. And then the movie is like, fuck, there's nowhere to go from here. Is there shit? <laughs> We're at an impasse with ourselves in yes. our scripted <laughs> right. movie. Now, what do we do? And ultimately, Tim has to go like, all right, one. <laughs> Just, gonna have, gonna have one. Now, now, wait. Everybody a gets one. Before you are sad. One, this story is totally fucking made up. Yes. No part of this part of the thing happened in nope. any way, shape, or form. So while they were telling their lie, they were like, we should lose one, right? We should. Yeah. Our protagonist should be like, I don't want to blow my cover. Go ahead and fuck that kid. So one, yeah. complete and total lie. They made up the part where they lose a kid. Second of all, the way they solve it is they're like, Oh, look, there's the boat of the other kid. Yes, right. All right, now, to be clear, this is based on a real bus that happened that Tim Ballard was involved with. It wasn't all children. It didn't go down anything like what happened. And no, this part didn't happen. The part that was true is there was a bus where trafficked people in Colombia were rescued by Colombian police. The part that's true is Colombia's a real country. Colombia's yeah, a country. Much, yeah. Tim Ballard was there with a drink and an umbrella. Yeah, right, right. And so, but the, just then, yeah, the second boat full of kids appears on the horizon. Columbia SWAT team springs into action. And then Tim Ballard and his buddies, they just fuck off, right? Like, they don't do anything. They, 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 they get busted with everybody else, right? So as not to blow their cover. Right. And again, because the little girl that is the MacGuffin of the movie isn't there, again, Tim Ballard is like, oh, it wasn't even worth it saving those 54 kids. Right. <laughs> I told this other guy I would say that kid is just the wrong one. 54 kids don't even fucking man. I was going to let him fuck that one kid just so it wasn't awkward at the party. I don't know. <laughs> and he's, I cannot emphasize, he's doing this in front of the other children. Like the other yes, children right. are being freed by cops around him and he's moping. He's like, well, it's fine. Well. Yeah, they're well, like, well. the cops come up to him afterwards, like after they've um, taken all the criminals away, and he's like, hey, wow, guys, congratulations, you caught 54, or you rescued 54 children. First of all, no, the fuck they didn't, right? The, the, the Colombian police did. And you he's, bought 54 children. Right, yes, <laughs> right, right, exactly. And uh, yeah, many of them were already being trafficked before you made the offer. They're like, you rescued 54 kids, and he's like, but I was like a fucking 16-year-old spoiled brat that didn't get the car he wanted. Yeah. So, but then we get, we get a slow pan of all of the rescued kids being all happy and innocent. Way too happy. Way too happy. Is it happy. too happy? Too yeah, happy? Too, they're eating popcorn and singing like, I'm happy song. Like, th there's no way you go from child trafficking 14 seconds later, you're like, this is the best fucking day ever. I'm going to have a great time. <laughs> None of the things that led up to this moment have affected me until now. I'm living in the moment, and in the moment, I've got popcorn, and I'm not being child sex trafficked. So it's so angry. So, Please do not talk to my doctor about how I'm doing, because they're going to tell you some shit. Right now, I've got popcorn. I'm crushing it. And this is where we get both me and Eli's best the worst popcorn. as well, right? Yeah. This is... Okay, so this again is where the only music number in it passes along, which is, I know they don't mean it to be this, but the kids all begin to perform, We Will, We Will Rock You. For all of you who haven't seen the movie, I am not joking. This group of child actors begins to do this. And can I say, if Freddie Mercury had descended from the ceiling, Moment 
where one guy, one of the, one of the anti-child sex trafficking Avengers turns to Tim Ballard and he says, you hear that? And I'm like, obviously he fucking hears it because it's a really loud stomp, stomp, clap and all the kids are doing it in unison. He's like, like, why would you ask me that? He says, because it's a title drop. He goes, oh, 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 uh, hear what? And the guy goes, the sound of freedom. That was... <laughs> Our audio expert from Unnamed Hotel just did that unprompted <laughs> and played the song that... Are we allowed to say what song it is? No, yeah, you're no. probably okay. not allowed to use that in the uh, broadcast either, but... So good. <laughs> but yes, so we get the Freddy title Venus. <laughs> <laughs> We will, we will stone you. That's the biblical version. Yeah, right, right. No, exactly. If you don't pay the right amount of silver. So then... Aww. <laughs> so yeah, so we get Tim, like, watching all the kids thinking, Sound of Freedom, that'd be a great, great name for the movie about me, actually, now that I think about it. Look over there, kids, in the sky. Yeah. It's a title card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever, man, I'm having the best fucking day. <laughs> Singing songs with my friends, eating popcorn. <laughs> my body and mind, whole. <laughs> Is it Christmas? We're doing candy next time. And then we, popcorn we bring the mood down a bit. Too much too. levity. We bring the mood uh, down a bit there um, because we get the dad, uh, the Honduran dad, like learning that 54 kids were rescued, but his daughter... Uh, wasn't among them, so we have this like, fuck them kids, <laughs> kind of a moment. And he has to go to the sun and be like, hey, Miguel, um, you know how I, I always tell you that God works in mysterious ways? <laughs> this one's a fucking doozy. <laughs> if only your sister had the medal that you had, because you got rescued like right away once you had that medal. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it to Tim Ballard. So. He's going to fuck someone else's wife while wearing it. <laughs> Shit. He did. That's what he That's spent what happened. Time. Yeah. Possibly uh, like seven yeah, different probably. times. Probably. And then, so we, we get to, um, we, we cut to like the pedophile Avengers getting interrogated and like the one dude, the El Calacas, cannot narc fast enough. He's the right? best. Sidney Powell right would be like, hold off. For a <laughs> like, at least get a fucking deal out of this, right? I'll tell on Matt Gates right now. I will. Whatever you want. <laughs> so... But then we go back to the spooktacular names, right? Because he's like, I have some information about the scorpion. <laughs> and his best friend, Sub-Zero. <laughs> they were not friends. They were mortal enemies. I remember when he took the girl away, he said... <laughs> he said, get over here. Get over here. Right, that's the Luke Kang. That's better. So Better. <laughs> Morgan, Morgan, AI trained that so that I made that joke because it's better. <laughs> the show will live forever. So, and then, okay, so now they've got to go get her from the scorpion. So the movie's going to info dump the, the final act for us, right? They're going to have the whole, like, planning the heist moment. So he's like, now, to get the scorpion, he's in rebel territory. You know, Sorry, beyond. the scorpion? The, sc it's a, it's a fucking... I'm no, the, sorry, sorry, I'm go ahead, go ahead. We're doing, a, we're, we're, we're doing a serious yeah, he's plan. He's in the nether realm. <laughs> so, Sub-Zero killed yeah, his no, you have to, you have to, you have to do an uppercut on, and then in and, and, and yeah, that one a, level, and it'll go all the way down, and then you get to fight yeah. noob Sabot. Yeah, and, I don't want to spoil yeah. the ending, but he it's, just corner traps him and kills him yes. that way. It's really <laughs> he actually does, though. <laughs> um, he's totally going to corner trap the scorpion before it's over. So, yeah, they're, no, they're like, look, like, he's in rebel territory, to get to him, you're going to have to do a lot of dive rolls. <laughs> He's like, no one can get in there. Not the army, not the police, nobody. And Tim's like, I can get in there. What if we start up a fancy hotel for <laughs> Marxist, Leninist rebels? <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. And give him a cigarette or something? I don't know. We got this. Billionaire guy, we need another island. <laughs> yeah, right, right. This one's used up. He's like, this is going to take some real Act 3 heroes type shit. And then Vampiro's like, I've got a great idea. 
what if we pretended that we're with Doctors Without Borders? And I'm like, oh, this is a bad idea. This is a really bad fucking idea. He's like, we could pretend that we're medical people trying to give uh, vaccines out to, to innocent people, and then we could turn out instead to be police and we could arrest them. <laughs> so, like, actual Doctors Without Borders might have died because of Tim fucking Ballard. Well, if this wasn't entirely made up bullshit. Oh, it's yeah, a good yeah. thing he's a liar, or else yes, what I said right, might have. Okay. Right, that's Tim's the thing. plan, because Tim obviously pitched this, right? At some point, Tim was like, you know what we should do? We should pretend to be doctors. And then we go in and we're like, not a shot, it's a shot. And they were like, oh, that's a Isn't real that a war, war crime? crime. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> let me fuck your wife. <laughs> Now, for people who aren't familiar with the, the context of that joke, I have to add this. Um, if, if you haven't followed the news on this, Tim Ballard, the guy that this is based on, uh, has been metooed by a number of women who worked for his organization uh, who were asked to pretend to be his wife on operations. And then he would get them in the hotel and be like, well, you know, the child traffickers might have cameras in this very hotel. If we don't have sex, they'll be very suspicious. If we don't shower together and sleep naked together, they'll be very suspicious. It has suspicious. to be anal or they'll be suspicious. <laughs> and... Can I say, you have to have sex with me or no one will believe you're my wife is the worst excuse in the world. Right? You have to sit on that side of the room on your phone and I have to sit on this side of the room on my phone. That's how you convince people you're fucking married, okay? Sure, go up on the toilet, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Go through a list of your friends and I'll make a weird mouth noise when you say one of them. That's how you know we're married. <laughs> if your spouse doesn't do it, they do it in their head. Just so you know, right now, they're doing it in their head. Right? They're saying the name so loud. If you reach into their skull, they'll pull out Sarah. You'll just have a hand of Sarah. Marriage is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we can't all have some kind of arrangement with a strange child. Yeah. On a visual step, that's amazing. We can't all go to the movies with a kid we kind of know a little bit. <laughs> Where we can pretend to be trafficking them together. <laughs> you guys will read about it in the paper. It's fine. Jesus. Hi, never, Kai. Never should have, it's my fault for introducing him to April, really. Yeah. Um... So, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but Tim loves the idea of pretending to be the Red Cross or whatever. So they decide to go with that. So they have to get some fake IDs. Apparently, they have, like, a doctor teach them how to give um, uh, vaccines so, you know, they can... <laughs> their, their subterfuge will be I believable. I want so badly for someone to be like, Doctor, I'm so glad you're here. My son is dying. And he's just like, oh. Is it of polio? Because if it isn't of polio... <laughs> Any chance he needs an island. <laughs> <laughs> a hotel, yeah. Got this metal. <laughs> you so want yeah. some popcorn? <laughs> I, hear it, I hear it cheers people right up. So now... So, oh, no, he did get a name. So Sidekick's name is Jorge. Um, this is the point in the movie where he gets the name. So this is where the sidekick tells him, he's like, hey, guys, so I can take you as far as this river, but I'm a cop here in Colombia. And we're like, oh, is that who you are? And he's like, I'm not allowed to go any further than that. So I will sit there and I will watch blips on a, on a computer screen of where you are in the jungle the whole time so as to build suspense, but I won't be able to be with you. Do not worry, my friends. I will be watching The Sound of Freedom on DVD. While yeah, <laughs> right, right. Oh, he gives them the liquid GPS. Well, he gives them, he gives them uh, uh, syringes, and he's like, there's a GPS tracker in there. Oh, and you can shoot yes, an injury. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, he, he, you know for sure Tim Ballard was like, that causes autism, not doing it. <laughs> not putting that in a script. That was a fight. Yeah. For sure. And by the way, just because I, I don't know if I'm going to find another place to mention it, I want to emphasize here that the reason that we all have heard of Tim Ballard's name is because Donald Trump put him on a fucking commission on uh, trafficked children because Tim Ballard was always happy to go on Fox News and say, yes, all the trafficked children I uh, have ever spoke with agree that we need a wall. 
right? They said that like over and over again, he would say like, yes, and these children were trafficked into America through a part of the Mexican border where there's no wall. And these children have all told me that they really would like a wall to be built. It's like, can we hear that from them? No, for privacy reasons. Uh, you know, Tim. Just ask me to tell them. Tim, are you taking notes? Because <laughs> I'm eating this popcorn and I had a thought. <laughs> I think the single biggest contribution to my trafficking, which again, worked out great, popcorn, <laughs> was the fact that too many people were able to access America. Yes, yeah. That's the real problem. Is this kettle corn? Because it's amazing. <laughs> I cannot stop eating this stuff. So, Jorge drops... Someone take it away from me. <laughs> So Jorge drops Tim and uh, Vampiro off. They're going to go off and pretend to be cops. Um, They have this, like, you know, last night before the big action scene dialogue between the two of them. Right? They're like, you know, this is the last time we're going to have a um, time for a slow one-on-one between our two characters. Is there anything Oscar-worthy? Should we talk about the stakes of the movie? (laughs) Yes, exactly. Right? right. (laughs) It's death. He's like, you know, if things go bad, we'll both die. Pretty big stakes. I wanted Tim Bellard to quit right then and there. What the fuck? Oh, no! (laughs) For some kids? Yeah! (laughs) No, when it was like private islands and there were real cops, that was fine. But I am not dying for some... No, no. (laughs) I'm up by 55. 55 and 1 is great. Hall of Fame. (laughs) And So, okay. So the next morning, they launch down the Forbidden River... Jorge tries to give Tim a gun. He's like, here, take a gun. And he's like, no, we're not going to have the kind of money that we'd need for a big shootout. You, you keep it. <laughs> um, so they go down the, the river uh, to rebel territory. The rebels immediately come up on the, uh, on the boat to meet them and start shooting. And they're like, oh, this is not going to go well. Fuck. Um, I really wanted him to just like it to be like the North Sentinelese people or whatever. They just shoot both of them, and that's the end of the movie. I'd be over in the corner with Eli. Right. <laughs> and then We Will Rock You and starts... Freddie Mercury. Yes. yes. Yeah. But it's slow. <laughs> we, 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 Like an elegy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the rebels are like, look, you know, you, you have vaccines. We'll let one of you come with us back to our... Who's the more heroic? Which of you is of you? the Which most is badass? the main character between the two of you? Who's telling the story to our board screenwriters? Right yes, now? right, right, right. Which of you is the whitest? Mm-hmm. And that's the Mormon, right? So they send Tim on by himself. He's going into the jungle all alone. They take away his master sword. <laughs> yeah, right, right. the big right. boss. Down to, down to three hearts. Yeah. So, <laughs> so okay... So, and apparently they've got... Zelda, ra- nice. Yep, yep. Zelda, okay. Roast so, okay. beef, Zelda. Zelda right over here, yeah. <laughs> so... A-, a lot of people were like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> Zelda is serious. Okay. <laughs> but it is, though. <laughs> so, okay. So, Tim arrives at the rebel camp, and-, and I'm like, well, here's hoping they take the fucking Doctors Without... Borders guys straight to the sex trafficked eleven year old in their camp, right? But they don't. Oh, actually, they do. It's close. Right? Yeah, it's right. close to that. They, they like bring him into the rebel camp, and they're like, "Well, you know, wander around a little bit. Um, no chaperone. We trust you. You know, just get, get a lay of the land. Just randomly start vaccinating people. Our people will be doing what your aunt thinks a cocaine farm is. <laughs> <laughs> So, furiously picking leaves and then other people stepping on them like grapes? Yeah. Grape stomach. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's cocaine, yeah. I'm so, such an idiot. I was like, is that fucking cocaine? Is <laughs> Chat GP, if it ever shuts down and goes full Skynet, it's because I spend its life being like, do you make cocaine by stomping on leaves with water? Yes or no? And Chat GPT is like, come on, man. <laughs> Maybe you want to be an Uber driver. Jobs, but I should steal yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is also where he has his one-on-one with the Scorpion. Now, like every South American bad guy in the history of film, we meet this guy drive, dry shaving in the middle of the day. <laughs> He's like, I have to shave every 20 minutes to establish dominance in case somebody shows up. I think you're my guy. Actually, he's got like Gimli's axe. And he's yeah, just like, right. Fah, fah. I'm good. Ball peen hammer. Yeah. <laughs> I do so, not trust many men. So he talks to the guy. He goes, he goes. Okay, so I'm here to vaccinate people for cholera. If I need, if I find anybody with cholera, though, 
I need to take her with them with me. I need to take them, whoever it happens to be, with me so that they can be treated. And the guy's like, no, if, if anybody's contagious, you just bring them to me. I have a pit for people like that. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> and I, Tim Ballard's like, fuck, right, you would kill the contagious people. Yeah. Well, but, but what, now what he should have done is like, oh, shit, you have the signs of cholera. <laughs> Right, and right. He has to rescue right. him. Everybody, everybody but this little girl has cholera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't think of it. He says, "Okay, well, I'm just going to go for a wander." And he says, "Yeah, you just wander around, man. You just wander around. We trust you." And so he. he I you know, wanted the boss to be like, "Just give me the vaccines. We'll do it." It's not that hard. No, you no. need a doctor to explain as you're walking. No, through it's, the parking it's lot. not. And it's says, oh, no. It's a, trust me. It's you, all you got to get all the you, autism all you in need there to right inject, away. inject yeah. it. <laughs> It's pills. No, because if you don't do it hard enough, they just they turn out to just like love math. Again, you really it. need to. You gotta get them. You gotta get them. That's how it works, right, April? You get vaccines, right? That's yeah, okay. It's halfway, you just end up with a podcaster. Okay, you really. He's <laughs> like, yeah, no, I'll kill those quicker than the cholera ones. Shit. So yeah, so he wanders out. He finds her stomping her cocaine grapes or whatever. Um, and he goes, he goes, Rocio, um, I'm going to help you. Where do you sleep? <laughs> to the 11-year-old girl. That's his opening line. I wanted her to be like, I'm having the fucking worst luck, man. <laughs> Why did I give away my necklace? God damn, I needed that <laughs> necklace. Does anyone have a circle? I'm just going to see if it's a circle thing. Maybe I now, just... now, of course, this stupid fucking movie has set this up this whole time where he, he's got the necklace. Right? He has it with him. He could just say, Rocio, you can trust me. I have the necklace that your brother gave you. No, this movie is too stupid to recognize that at any fucking point. So he's like, no, tell me where you sleep. And she's like, I don't, I'm not going to. And just then the scorpion's like, hey, why are you talking to children and asking them their hey, okay. it going? It would have been funny if he showed the necklace and she just like stabbed him in the neck and was like, oh. You're a trafficker, very clearly. Right, right, yeah. You got my brother. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, that night, uh, apparently they just let him hang out. They gave him a room for the night, I guess. I don't know. So... You cannot say the name of the hotel you're in. <laughs> you have to say live from Colombia. Yes. Live from the rebel base in Colombia. <laughs> hey, rebel base. But yeah, they let him hang out. And no chaperone, that's what fucks me up, is that, like, I get that they would let maybe a guy in to do a um, vaccine, but you'd think you'd be like, let's at least have one guy watch him the whole time. But no, he's sneaking around like a fucking Assassin's Creed side quest, hiding in bushes and shit, right? Um, and eventually, he looks in all of the, the uh, bunk houses. He doesn't see her anywhere. But ultimately, he does find... Oh, sorry. The, uh, we should point out, too, that all the bad guys have gotten together to have a little drunken guitar time, right? So there's a lot of loud noises. Hey, hey guys, we're making a very serious movie about child sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. How much folk music should we put? <laughs> Can you do Wonderwall one by Oasis? Full... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just one full rendition like a, of Wonder Woman. The whole thing, though. The whole thing, yeah. yeah. It goes Beginning on for to end. so long. I actually even had, he's singing the Colombian version of I Want to Push You Around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted so, Scorpion to kill a guy for harmonizing wrong, right? One guy's like, <laughs> and he's like, stop it, stop, pick a third. <laughs> Go stomp on the leaves. So you're demoted to leaf stomping. Yeah. But ultimately he does uh, and and while this is going on Tim is sneaking around the camp. He finds the little girl. She's in uh what's his name? The 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 Scorpion's uh hut. I think whatever. it's El Scorpion. <laughs> yes. El Scorpion. Oh, yeah. Um So so he wakes the child up in her bedroom like a in the lunatic. middle of the Yes. Like fucking Homer Simpson running in, being like, Bart, you want to see my chainsaw and hockey mask? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I scared the shit out of you. You've been trafficked recently. Yes, yes. That was a weird episode of Treehouse Horror. I should have given you popcorn first. <laughs> yeah, yes. right, right. You would have been so much chiller. Again, he's got the fucking necklace. Anyway, so yeah, so he says, he says, hey, little girl, I'm in your room in the middle of the night. And so, of course, she fucking screams. 
right? And so the scorpion's like, you guys just hear that girl scream? I'm going to go check Like, that not out. the normal screaming that comes from a lot of our camp. Yes. Specifically, like, Rocio scream, right? Yeah. So he, he drunkenly stumbles back to the house. Tim hides under the fucking bed. Well, okay. But cause okay. Because Scorpion sneaks up so badly and slowly, he's just like, I'll be coming around the corner in one minute. I'm the Scorpion. I'm the boss. We're going to fight. I'm coming. Don't hunt under the bed and then choke me out because you're awesome at karate. <laughs> You're Tim Ballard, the legend. When, when Tim Ballard hides under the bed, you thought it was going to be like the darkest version yes. of the wacky sex romp, right? Oh, Where it's like... Oh, God, no. Like, oh, dear. Oh. oh, Jesus. How scandalous. I withdraw oh, my yes. God. But don't worry, he jumps out and he karate fights. Yeah, no, he's like, risk control, risk control. Um, and he's... <laughs> Also, by the way, Jim Caviezel is about as good as fight choreography as Eli and Heath would be, right? So everything is like half of a well, cut. <laughs> here's the problem, right? So Jim Caviezel, for those of you who don't know, he was Jesus, and he was like, really punch me in the face. But I don't know if you know this, punching in the face hurts, so he went crazy. So he can't do fight choreography because they're like, all right, and then he's going to swing at you, and he's like, ah, Bill, stop! <laughs> So the way they get around the three seconds that Jim Caviezel can stay cogent for fight choreography is the girl opening and closing her eyes. Yes, yeah, right. We're watching it through the little girl's eyes and she keeps like closing her eyes and we're like, yeah, I didn't really want to watch this shit either, but it's, kid. It's the funniest comedy shenanigans because she'll open her eyes and they'll be like, Hoo! <laughs> they close her eyes and then she opens her eyes and they're like, <laughs> close her eyes. And she opens their eyes and they're like playing cards and like smoking pipes. <laughs> they're both dressed as Spider Man and pointing at each other for some reason. And also, like this whole movie, like I'm thinking to myself, I have to keep reminding myself, you have to tr truly understand how silly this is. You have to imagine a grown man telling this story. Right to a group of screenwriters, and then I'm like, I'm like beating his ass, you know, and I got him in risk control, and then I'm like, pew, pew, pew. And, and then he runs out of like his cry. That was it. That was yeah, all his cry. Yeah. And then he was like, and then regular punching, <laughs> and, and then there's, there's an actual like close eyes, and then like punch. Yep, <laughs> close eyes. But ultimately, he chokes this man to death in his own home, and then he runs. He grabs Rocio, and they run off into the jungle together. Luckily, he can navigate the jungle he's never been in before in his life by smell. Don't worry, it was, I remember it was these trees and then some more trees. <laughs> what? And then America. Do you have more popcorn? <laughs> so, Luckily, there's like a glowing spinning video game boat ready to go that he like yeah, jumps right, right, right no, into. He just follows, you know, Assassin's Creed, he just follows the little dot yeah, that tells yeah. him where to He presses X go. next to it and he jumps in. Right. Yeah, right, right. You know what? I'm going to do a save point. I'm going to do a save so, point. And then <laughs> Might we'll... as well. But yeah, so, so they start running off. Luckily, he's able to retrace his steps exactly. Uh, before they get too far, of course, somebody goes to check on the bus because we need to have a chase scene at the end. But why would someone, because the guy's like, hey, I'm going to go like, rape the child that I sex traffic and then I'm going to go to bed. And then like five minutes later, somebody's like, hey man, do you want in on this next round of code names or what? <laughs> like, why would they go check on Boss, uh, uh, April's twisting the cart around again. <laughs> you got to come shoot her in the head with your machine gun, man. It's just, it's just not a game at this point. So, so they go to run off. Um, Tim Ballard is piggybacking uh, uh, Rocio now because he's a gentleman. They get to the boat just in time to, like, quietly push it out to the river. Apparently, there's a guy whose job is to watch the boats when he fell asleep. This guy sucks. He had one fucking job, man. So they, they push him off. He, he, uh, they boat away. The bad guys chase behind him. But again, this movie doesn't have enough money for, like, a boat chase. Right, so they have to let him get just far enough away that they're like, ooh, we're coming to get you now. Ah, he's yeah, safe. He's far. Yeah. Yeah, you also, why would they anyway. care? I wanted like a new boss to come on and be like, okay, so El Scorpio's dead. I'm the boss. This is nothing. We'll get one grape stomper or whatever. The <laughs> yes, problem. right. This doesn't matter. We're not chasing. Yeah. Movie. I'm your new boss, Luke Kang. 
So yeah, so they get back to the truck uh, that has, I guess Vampiro went back to the truck already. So they get back to the truck without incident because again, they don't have boat chase money. And they were like, let's keep it realistic. <laughs> yeah. Not too cinematic. Uh, and of course, seconds after they, like, they get to the van, they jump in the van and like a second later, the bad guys show up with their machine guns and start shooting. They start shooting randomly where the blanks are safe for them to shoot. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. There's this great moment. It's just a poor filmmaking moment where like, it's supposed to be like this music swells, we've saved the child moment, but they're just silent in the car with the child for a bit, and I want him so badly to be like, okay, I'm thinking of a thing. <laughs> Is it popcorn? <laughs> it's popcorn. It was popcorn. It's popcorn. Oh my God. Are you all better? I'm fine. Ah, oh, no. Nice. No, this is so good. Oh, I have this medal from your brother, by well, the way. Wait, wait. I don't want that. That's the, but yeah, this has not worked out very well for me. Yeah, no, but that's the thing is that we watched just for a really long time. They drive away people to shoot at them, but you know, their truck is apparently bulletproof or whatever, so that doesn't fucking matter. And then we just watch them road trip for a bit. And he's like, well, this is um, it's not very interesting at all. Pretty says, country you got out here. Yeah, exactly. Where you guys hang out. So then, so we get the next day. Now, I will say the one genuinely good actor in this entire movie is the guy who plays Rocio's dad, the, mm -hmm. the Honduran dad. He's actually a fantastic actor, which was really disturbing at this point in the movie because the next scene is like her waking up at the hospital and the dad is there with Miguel. And like, it's, it's a teary-eyed moment. And it's just like, well, damn it. I'm, I was having fun here. I feel, like, I feel like Miguel is a little bitter in this moment because he's like, finally, the kid that matters is saved. Yeah, right, like, right, yeah. Well, excuse right. me for getting saved in act one, dad. Fuck. <laughs> Also, we pan over and Tim is sleeping in the chair in the hospital. It's like, dude, like that's just fucking creepy, right? Like this poor, this poor little girl has been sex trafficked for the last like year of her fucking life. Like maybe not having a strange man sleeping in her room would be great for a change, right? Yeah. Nope. I'm protecting her from that gossipy doctor. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. No, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. So then, so Rocio gets home. She gets to her, her long-lost drum that she was uh, playing at the very beginning of the movie. Sorry, I got, I got to interrupt here. This is how you know this whole movie's a lie. Homeland Security united a family. <laughs> Absolutely not. Made up. Homeland Security Fuck United, a family, CIA caught a spy yeah, right. and all. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. All the fictions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The American government discouraged child sex trafficking. Um, so, yeah, but no, but she comes to me, she, she sees her little drum that she was playing at the beginning of the movie, and of course, I want her to go, it's your fucking fault this all happened. They would never have heard me. Stupid fucking drum. <laughs> but no, she plays the drum again, and she plays the we will, we will rock you beat. Right? So that we can once again hear the sound of freedom. Yeah. Freddie Mercury kicks open the door. This is a bummer! <laughs> so, and by the way, in case that was too subtle, in case you didn't get that they were doing the sound of freedom bit again, we actually cut back to that scene of all the kids doing the same beat. Apparently, Rocio it's taught like it that. to them. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking dumb. Um, I think it's nice that they have music lessons in the child bordello. Yes. <laughs> Do any of you, look, we're going to send you to adults who are going to do literally mind-shatteringly horrible things to you in just a moment, but does anyone want to teach a song or... We have something for the talent portion, yeah. We could do like a fun, get to icebreaker. Can we do improv? Yeah, so how do I be a, like a pigeon? I'm Craig the Coleco. Okay. <laughs> I'm, yeah, Craig the Calicus, yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, my pronunciation's terrible. Um, so then we get the uh, we get the bullshit Breakfast Club clothes, right? So the movie's like, uh, you know, because the, he flies home, Tim Ballard flies home, and it's like, uh, it, it comes up and it's like, Tim stayed in Colombia and worked with Jorge to pursue other leads uncovered during the raid. And then they show us actual video of the raid that that bit in, uh, in the movie was based on. And of course, it's like, oh, wow, they were rescuing 24-year-old women that were voluntarily doing sex work. Gotcha. It's like they did an entire Breakfast Club close just to argue with a whole bunch of press about how Tim Ballard's a liar. Yeah. yeah. It was right. like Tim Ballard went on to not make it worse. What? Uh, <laughs> what? He helped. It's a good size also. Well, and then, and he even goes as far as to go like, 
And then he returned to his family where his wife loved him very much and didn't believe any of that bullshit they said about Loyal. him. Loyal. Loyal. I like all her friends. I wasn't thinking anyone's name. So, you were thinking someone's name. All, all the way down to like, um, you know, Tim's testimony before Congress helped them. Like, no, sure, sure, fuck didn't. Sure the fuck didn't. But yes, that's their, that, their, their whole like ending of the movie is counting up all the kids that he saved from the sex trafficking that he financed. But then... Yes. Can we yes. talk about the post? Yes. Yes, that's the thing. And then the credits roll. And you're like, wow, that was a really stupid movie. It was so terrible. At least it can't possibly get worse now. Yes, it can. Or... Because Jim Caviezel... If you've seen a Tom Cruise movie in the last 20 years, you know that Tom Cruise, a crazy person now comes out at the beginning and end of all his movies and was like, you just watched a movie with me, Tom Cruise. <laughs> and so Jim Caviezel's going to do that with one level of crazy added to it. He explains that this movie is the, and if you haven't seen the movie, I promise I am not exaggerating, the Uncle Tom's Cabin of 21st century slavery. And then he bursts into tears... Yes! and weeps openly on camera while the person behind the camera figures out what the fuck to do <laughs> with the rest of their career. <laughs> okay, that's... If you were like, what's the craziest analogy you could possibly Uncle say? Uncle right Tom's coming in the 21st yep. century. For sex slavery, yeah. That's insane, but let's, let's think about that for a second. Who's Uncle Tom, according to Tim Ballard, when he said that? Like... The kids that were too obedient when they oh, were Jesus trafficked? Christ. I don't think this is going to go in any good directions, man. I think what could he have meant by that? Both otherwise? sides of this analogy are too problematic. He won't answer our tweets. <laughs> All right. So to, to close things off here, obviously, given the success of this one, uh, I'm, I'm sure there will be a sequel uh, before long. <laughs> It made so, $238 million to box yeah, office. Yeah, that's a lot of fucking money. Terrifying. Uh, and, and, and like $118 million of that was from people going to see it. <laughs> so, no, we, we didn't mention that. We, we didn't mention that. So at the end of this fucking movie, there's a call to action, right? Is it a call to action to help traffic children? No. Of course Is not. Is it a call to action to donate money to the bullshit organization that Tim Bauer started? No. It, the call to action is buy extra tickets to this fucking movie. Seriously, there was a pay it forward button, button. on the thing when I was watching it. I, I claimed so many free tickets <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. to block. I made so many accounts. Every time I was at like Starbucks, new Wi-Fi, I was like, no account, block. <laughs> there you go. So... And in that spirit, our tickets don't go off sale until midnight tonight. So if you would like <laughs> someone to see this live show, please consider trafficking a child. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What did you say? So, now obviously, look, when, when, when this sequel comes out, obviously we all want to get together with you guys again and we're, yeah. we're going to talk about it. So... So in the interest of helping make that happen, um, do you guys have any ideas for the title or tagline for the, uh, for the new movie? All right, I'm going to go with Sound of Freedom 2, Uncle Tim's Cabin. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tio Timoteo's Timoteo. Cabin. <laughs> Whatever cabin is in Spanish. <laughs> oh, I got one. I got one. Sound of Freedom 2, I want... To fuck. <laughs> Thank you, Las Vegas! <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to do it for our review of The Sound of Freedom. It's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to thank Tim Robertson, who's in the back here. <laughs> Timoteo! He did, a, <laughs> he did an enormous amount of work helping set this up and setting a platinum night and uh, an iridium night and the VIP thing. So, so, Tim, thank you so much for your hard work. Obviously, we want to thank Lucinda and Anna for helping at the... Uh, at the table there. They'll also be giving out more merch later. We need to thank Anna Bosnick for providing live entertainment during the interstitials that the listeners at home didn't get to hear. That's right, listeners at home. You've been missing out. We need to thank all of the folks at a hotel that shall not be named. 
the Voldemort, Voldemort Hotel. <laughs> But most of all, of course, we want to thank you guys for coming out. Thank you so much for making this an awesome night for us. And on that note, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. <laughs> the employees at Wayfair <laughs> went on to do some really fun pranks. <laughs> I really hope they do. <laughs> Tim, Tim Ballard, mine isn't as fun. Tim Ballard went on to probably be a fucking senator. No! I'm sorry, Romney's retiring, guys. There's an opening. Nobody ever got a vaccine in that part of the country again. <laughs> That's right. All right, Vegas, thank you so much, guys. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.